Hi, friends. How are you doing? So, a uh, friend of mine in Malaysia wanted me to take this part, show him how to do it. So, I'm going to screw this. So, rather than fast forwarding, while I do this, I'm going to tell you a little ditty about a man named Joe, actually, a boy named Joe, um, who was friends with a friend of mine who used to run a sidecar, um, sidecar company called Motivation. And they used to make all the sidecars for the side of Harley Davidson's. And he, in his earlier days, before he had done this, he, uh, he, he managed a very little-known band called Van Halen, who had a lead singer named David Lee Roth, who was a Jewish kid who had a full PA system. So, the band, of course, not, not the hottest on David, but however, he had a full PA. He can gig anywhere. Dude, we've got to bring David Lee Roth onto our, onto our show. So, this was actually a friend. Oh, let's see what it was. It was actually a friend of Pat's and David's, if I remember correctly. Uh, so, the ditty goes like this. Master Joe had a master plan. He had a hat full of sugar. Folks said he's a lucky man. And one night he just disappeared. All we found was his hat in the clearing. Down by the 7-Eleven, folks cried. Someone said he died, but I know that Joe didn't go to heaven. Because he was looking for trouble. The trouble in his eyes. He was looking for trouble. And they were two of a kind. And how many times have I said to myself, I feel like a yo-yo. I've been here too long. I bet if you asked them, our heroes would say, We're already gone. I know. Somehow, I know. Well, okay, that was a song that David Lee Roth did on his, uh, on his album, but that was about Joe. Yeah. Um, what happened was, from what I understand, he found an abandoned car that was unlocked, and he was, I guess he was looking for, through, for a stereo. If the rumor is correctly, because he was, yeah, he was, he was, he was snatching stereos. This was somewhere in Pasadena or something. And in one wiring the stereo in a certain car, you have to open the glove box to get to the power of the stereo. And he found about two kilos of cocaine. And he took it. Well, the person that owned this car, this car was unlocked because it was actually unlocked with the keys of ignition for a drug transaction. And they found out who's stole the cocaine, and they killed him. Yep. So, not very street smart was Joe. And look at this, this is almost a part of perfect time for a story. Oh, ah, and there went my catch spring. Yeah, that catch spring was under a lot of tension. I hate it when that happens. I just launched a cat spring. What? Ugh. Everything is fighting me today. I hate it. I just launched. I hate it. I just launched that cat spring into outer space. So here we are. That's that's good because now I can show you the full spring. Here is a number 144 Hillman. Okay, it is a .028 gauge spring. And put in mind with smaller coils, uh, you don't need uh, thick coils to get you up to about nine kilograms. This spring is nine kilograms. It's just very short draw. Okay, so. This space will not fit in here. This is my cat's rest. It just fell off my blaster. Thank you for falling off my blaster. Making my life more difficult. Get in there, fucker. Ah, there we go. But, this this blaster is different. This blaster is a little bit more like your old uh, sharpshooters and your old Nerf blasters from the 90s, where the catch is always open. So instead of the catch going to rest, going over a click, and then going back to rest to your catch, it's open all the time. You have to cut about, I would say, that much off. This much. Or a little more. Let's go a little more. Okay. Because, so here we are. Let me make sure this gets it. Because everything seems to be at war with me today. About that much. About that much. That should be plenty. Ah. Okay, so about that much spring. You put the open coil on the top of the plate right here. 
Okay. There you go. Okay. So, that's what you need. You need a massive heavy catch spring because I'm running a massive heavy spring. Now, on this one, I ended up cutting this down one. But if I move this up just a little more, I could have um, easily, easily have, um, have fitted the whole thing. I just didn't move this up enough. So, what we have here, we have a number eight screw, two inches. Here, here. There's a lock washer right there. I completely grinded this out, drilled hole, drilled hole, drilled hole, almost to the catch right there, if you see it. Put the whole thing in, and then I, I, I covered it with many layers of super glue. You could use epoxy, but epoxy won't bond to, to this material very well. Um, the screw has a little spring in there to keep this forward. And in here is a locking washer on the inside here. Little nylon washer. There's your head. And the whole thing is filled with epoxy on this end. Then I put fiber tape on it. Then on the back side of it, I super glued it on the inside, let that dry like that for about a day. And then I sealed the whole thing with go to glue on the inside here. So the whole thing's sealed. But this, right, doesn't move, doesn't go anywhere. It's not adjustable like the bird of prey, but it's very powerful. Um, let's see. Uh, the catch, you can see all I did was modify this so it would fit a nut there. I was going to double nut it, but then I decided that's too much reciprocating mass. There's a catch. Nice wide catch. Look at that. Look at that rod catch, guys. Look at that. Look look at that. It, it's, it's a full half inch wide catch instead of three eighths. It means more surface area. Now, about the catch. Look at this catch right here. Real strong. Now, I put a bevel on it right here with a file before I put it all back so that it would it would run into this a lot easier and it seems to be paying off and long brown hair everywhere i have long hair that's the one thing about long hair is it, it does get everywhere okay so there is our plunger rod right there i am going to probably put a screw here and make this a little wider because that is real tight and you can put a full length here it's just that i went short and rather than taking apart i cheated and just cut it it seems to be working just fine, okay. But I just I just cut like one coil off of this, and that's it, okay. But you can engineer this spacer so you can fit a full one, no problem. It's just I didn't want to go back and redo it, okay. So uh, this right here, there is a number eight stainless going down the back here. If you do not have anything back here. This bulge is out, and it doesn't have an, enough to distribute the weight of it. So this and a lock nut along the back. Drill a hole right, right here so it doesn't get in the way of your trigger catch or your trigger. Just right behind there. That's like the best place for it right there. Why they did not they put the screw here and not here is beyond me. But probably for support of the trigger catch here is why they did it. I really wish that they had uh, actually... Uh, put a put put a screw here or where this tab is. It also put a screw, but Hasbro chose not to do that for whatever reason. The other than that, this, the uh, shell is not modified at all. It's that's just your normal shell. What is highly modified is this. Okay, so along here, this rim that goes from this barrel, I have one quarter inch of uh, of this cut down. Normally, this little rim goes all the way out here. But because I wanted to cut down the dead space, I cut this completely down. You're going to see a little tab on the inside of this part right here that you're going to have to sand off. It's this little um, orange tab that's inside of it. That way you can fit this, and you may have to do some filing on the outside of the plunger tube to get to fit. After that, it is crazy glued together. There's a coupler right there. That's a 9 16th piece of brass. It's um, crazy glue and, uh, and uh, silicone glued. So it's crazy glued first to adhere to the plastic, and then it is silicone glued to seal it on both sides. And on the inside, that's actually a padding from a Thunderbow and an old O-ring that I just glued in there as a spacer so that the plunger head doesn't just contact the outside of this and break. I wanted it to have um, more weight distribution on the inside, but I wanted the dead space out and padded. So the inside of this is also crazy glued on this side, and then also silicone glue on this side and then the padding on there. So it's really not as hard as it sounds. All you're pretty much doing is you're gluing 
the coupler in there, you're centering it with a piece of 73 seconds to make sure it's centered when you put it in, okay? And then you are uh, you are gluing it. This can fit, um, it doesn't fit the Mega Darts because this is wide, but it does fit rival balls and it does throw them like 120 feet per second. It's very, very fast. I really like it. Okay, so other than this change, there's nothing to this except that this tube no longer is supported by the back of the frame. Like many of my blasters, uh, if anybody who really studies ultra match lore, um, very rarely is the plunger uh, is is the is the is the plunger tube supported by the back. Uh, I like to have the back free floating to the tube. It, it it's just the way I like to do it. If you have something in front to anchor it like that, you're fine. And and then it's anchored up here too. So really, if you bolt it down properly, it's not a problem. Okay, except that this right here, you may want to file down right up here. See this right here that used to go here. So you can see how I moved up the whole plunger tube about three eighths of an inch um, to uh, to compensate for this. So and but also to compensate for this is I took out the AR housing. Um, the AR housing takes up a lot of room. It's this big white clunky thing that takes up about that much space. Uh, if you take that out, you got a lot more travel. So you can see that the end result of the travel on my on my plunger is about the same because I make up for even though I have to move the plunger head up, I make up for it by taking out the AR housing and by moving this up. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, hit me in the comments. Sometimes I don't know why, and this is why a lot of times I don't comment on YouTube. Sometimes it just doesn't let me comment. As a matter of fact, for most of the time, I'll hit the reply button and it will just be there. It won't send it. I don't know why it does that. I, I got to work it out. But the barrel, again, okay, don't be fooled by this fancy barrel. It's no different than any other barrel I make. It's just a 1730 seconds. This one has some 916s around it, but you don't need it. 1730 seconds, and then it goes into into the suppressor unit, which is glued. All you really need is a piece of, about a 9-inch piece of 1730 seconds. Uh, I put speed grooves on here. I put, you know... I put, I put delay rings on there, but you don't have to. Um, you can play with it, do what you want. But that's pretty much it. Okay, so there's our run through. A Master Joe had a master plan. He got a hat full of sugar, folks said. He's a lucky man. One night he just disappeared. And all that was left was a hat in the clearing. Down by the 7-Eleven, folks cried. Someone said he died, but I know Joe didn't go to heaven. No. And he was looking for trouble. It was in his eyes. The Nerf Freaks. <laughs>